Welcome to another episode of uh, Cooking with Manos. Today we're going to make a new recipe. Ring banana. We need fresh bananas. Maria. And we're going to show you. We chop them. Manos, 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 manos. Stop, 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 man. Ring banana is not a food. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. So, ring banana is actually a car. And not just any car. Mm -hmm. It's a very special car. And now we're going to see the full story of the ring banana. From buying the car to actually racing 24 hours of a scary. It's gonna be cool. Perfect. Enjoy. Yeah. And there, out of the flames, comes the ring banana. And the title, Ring Banana Does a Scary. Boom! Is this the idea you spent four months on? What kind of disability did you develop uh, during the winter that is new, that you didn't have before among the many that you already had? What, what is your problem? What is your new problem? So you don't, you don't like the idea? No. I like it a lot. What uh, does a flame have to do with this? What uh, a kitchen in Greece have to do with the race? The it's Ascari 24 hours. We are not there, the car is not there, people doesn't understand what is this. <sighs> Can we actually see the fucking thing that you put together? Or if this is what you put together, tell me, I'm gonna go home. It's really nice, huh? It's really nice, Well, you might find this too abstract. So let's backtrack a few months where the soon to be owner of the Ring Banana wanted to share with the world his opinion on MX5s and MX5 drivers. The only thing I knew was that MX5s are for head racers and uh, are extremely slow on track. And normally MX5 drivers think they are very fast only because they are driving very slow cars. So they assume that they will be able to do the same in a fast car, which is completely untrue. And now let's go back to the day that everything started. The 2nd of March 2015. For me it's still an ugly car. Doesn't matter which color, what shape, all of them. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We have start. to show to the car. I am like a kid, so I decided that I wanted to an MX-5 and in the in a time span of uh, 10 hours I already had 10 cars laid down and I, I think I called Thomas, which is here, I called Thomas on the phone at home and said, I called this guy, I called that guy, send this email, send it here, I printed. So it's, it's like uh, I, I have no patience for this uh, sort of stuff. So I decided to buy it, I want it the next day. And, uh, and of course... Normally, uh, buying a car, this is not a very good idea. Eh? I, I, you decide today, you buy tomorrow, you end up with something that is shit. Which is exactly what we ended up with. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. There it is! Beautiful! There is nothing beautiful there. Eh? Beautiful. That's the best Miata I've ever seen. The Next. best! The best! Number one! The best! Sun before, so I literally gave him the money. It started raining, like the, I completely. God started to cry when he saw exactly. this. Exactly, said God doesn't like me owning an MX-5, but I, I will have him change his mind. I had the Lotus at that time, and the, the thought of driving the Lotus uh, in salt and snow would give me a heart attack. So I needed something terrible to drive around, and uh, and and you see, the psychologically buying an MX-5, which was cheap, and buying or something that was clearly a bad MX-5 made it that much more easy to just buy it. And I can't believe what I just bought. <laughs> I just bought. Uh, I don't even. I, I, you know, I, I'm wrong already. I turned the wrong way around. <laughs> So yeah, that was the process. We had no intention to track it, with no intentions to to do to do nothing at all. And I remember the day that it was raining, but it was snowing at the ring. I remember that I drove it topless in the snow at the ring because I didn't drive a topless car for a long time. And uh, fuck that evening. 
I took Sergio for a spin and I remember that at that time um, the car had a radio and there was a CD inside which had uh, like Vamos a la Playa and we were playing Vamos a la Playa super loud in the car with the snow, the top down, drifting the roundabout uh, around here and the car was just, I bought it two hours before and uh, I come back, uh, we come back uh, we come back to the to the workshop and uh, we jump out of the car and uh, I lose the key. I, I mean, I don't even know where it could, could it, it could be. Fuck, let's talk about the plan B. What, what happens if I never gonna find my key? And then, if, if losing the key wasn't enough, a fucking snowstorm came. I mean, honestly, honestly, 10 minutes ago, I was with the fucking top down. <laughs> and I was enjoying a beautiful night, beautiful stars. And now, lose my key, at the same moment I lose my key, a fucking thunderstorm comes, and now there's five centimeters of snow on the ground. I mean, fuck! <laughs> It's fair to say that the first 24 hours with Eric Banana has been an emotional roller coaster, both for the owner of the car and the rest of the One Lap Hero team. As you can imagine, it all went downhill from there. First day working on the car after buying it, and uh, I've cut myself. And maybe the little MX-5 would have stayed gaps daily, doing boring supermarket runs. Except... Eventually it turns out that the key was actually the turning point of everything, because I lost it again. Yeah, and this is where the whole adventure started. So, at some point I lost it again. Uh, it uh, just fell off my pocket and it, it fell off uh, through the stairs in the workshop. So, it wasn't lost. Yeah, the guys found it uh, immediately. And I found the keys... Uh thrown in the middle of the of the workshop but they didn't tell me so and I remember I was going crazy because I said fuck I need this car and I need to go the key to get the keys so I was going down to Adenau to the Mazda shop to say ah how can we do this do you have like locks different locks yes but then how what do you do with the boot uh, and it's uh, it was a nightmare and, and in the meantime the motherfuckers always had the key so I was running around like a headless chicken and the guys had the key and uh, I was dismounting the doors and everything to change the lock and um, and then one day I wake up like uh, any other uh, day and there is uh, a video on Facebook <laughs> with my car in it with uh, countless uh, penises uh, painted on it and Costas wearing uh, a ridiculous uh, helmet and goggle combination saying something ridiculous about uh, renting the car out and I genuinely I didn't know anything about it it just happened and then from then on it just snowballed out of control <laughs> uh, but what about the rust? rust is... Uh, rust is good Rusty's history means that this car has, has experience. Experience is good, you know? But not everything was bad about the Ring Banana. With a few key modifications, the car proved to be a tremendous amount of fun on track. <laughs> Most exciting lap I've ever done. That was fucking hard work. Team success! However, many times the upgrades were just an excuse for the whole team to get together after hours and work towards the same stupid goal. But also, discuss about the truths of life. Ask any professional racing driver, it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or by a mile. Winning is winning. And who won here? Fun. Fun definitely won, because the Ring Banana gave us the excuse to be stupid at a place that was taking itself too seriously at times. <laughs> <laughs> The rusty yellow black roadster always brought a smile to the faces of the One Lapiro team and the many people that followed its adventures online. 
<laughs> and without any of us realizing, the 2015 season was over and the legend of the Ring Banana was born. <laughs>